I join with everyone here tonight in acknowledging that we are on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people and I'm sure, like me, you would like to uh, acknowledge Elders' uh, past and think about how important it is that we do everything we can to address the serious uh, inequalities that exist between uh, the first Australians and other Australians. I do want to say a very big thank you to all of you for organising uh, this event. Uh, it is uh, a topic that is absolutely critical and I, I just say, Julia, that I very much agree with the way in which you have, uh, at the end of your talk, constructed the problem. So it does flow into uh, what I want to say tonight. Uh, the future of work. What uh, is work going to look like for our society? What does it mean for our economy? What should policy makers do? And of course, what should the priorities be? Because uh, you do have to uh, set priorities. I think there's no doubt, as Julia emphasised in her remarks, that uh, technology is absolutely at the core of changing uh, the work we do. She used the example of truck drivers. We're seeing here in Melbourne right now the impact of uh, Uber. And I understand it's not just truck drivers that uh, are going to be uh, self-driving. Uh, I understand that Uber's recently announced a partnership with Volvo that will see modified self-driving cars tested in the streets of Pittsburgh in a number of weeks. So this is upon us right now. Uh, it's these, uh, these ideas, I think, uh, uh, really a few years ago were beyond most of our imagination. And many of the things that Julia mentioned, many of the examples that she mentioned are still beyond many of our comprehension uh, and is happening very, very dramatically. I think we do understand, I'm sure that's why the Fabians have decided to have this series, is that it, this rapid change is making a lot of people feel very, very insecure. Uh, we've just seen here this week in Melbourne uh, the uh, rally on the streets of our own city by taxi drivers feeling very much that their lives are... Um, Un, their livelihoods are under threat and we could uh, look around to many other communities uh, and neighbourhoods in Australia and we see very, very much uh, the same anxiety. Uh, I certainly uh, am very conscious of uh, what's already happening and what's likely to happen with the closure of the automobile manufacturing uh, in different parts of Australia that is going to have a huge impact, both on the individuals, of course, and their families, but also on uh, their communities. So there's no doubt that technological change is having, of course, a very strong economic effect. Uh, also, as you'd all be aware, and I, I'm not really going to uh, talk about this much myself tonight, but so in some of the breakout groups, you might like to think about the political consequences. We, of course, can see it writ large in the American election. Uh, we can see it in Brexit. And, uh, of course, many people are talking about it in relation to the re-emergence of Pauline Hanson here in Australia. Tracing the origins of each of these to a mix mixture of anxiety about uh, job security, rising inequality and technological change. I'm sure, uh, like me, when you talk to uh, young people and you ask them uh, what they do, they often don't reply with a single occupation. They might say uh, that they're working for three days a week in a retail or hospitality job, uh, they might have a second job, or they might have another project that they have underway. Uh, so much of this uh, is representative of uh, what's happening in our workforce. A very, very significant increase in casualisation and part-time work. And I just want to give you a few figures about this because they really, really bring home the impact of uh, the, uh, both the change 
but also the related inequality. In the past year, our economy has created around 220,000 jobs. 190,000 of those were part-time. Full-time employment grew by just under 30,000 or 0.4 per cent in the year to July. The trend to part-time work is particularly pronounced among men. In 1990, 80 per cent of men in the prime age, uh, working age range, 25 to 64, were working full-time. So in 1990, 80 per cent of that prime age working men were working full-time. Just 3.8% of those men were working part-time. Now, only 72% of that prime age working male group is working full-time. 10% are working part-time. So a very significant shift in that short period. To put it more starkly, in the past five years, the number of men employed part-time has increased by just over 21% compared to an increase of just 1.9 per cent for full-time work. So a huge shift, a huge shift in the way that men are working. And uh, just to um, continue to emphasise the fact that I'm sure many of you are aware of, we already have in Australia a very, very high proportion of women working part-time, uh, much higher than in other similar countries. So the shift to part-time and casual work is a very important reason uh, as to why we have uh, wages growth stagnating in Australia. You'd all be familiar with that data. You'd also know that underemployment in this country is stuck at a near record high of around 8.5%. Not anywhere near talked about uh, enough in my view. Uh, we talk rightly, a lot about the unemployment rate, uh, but there is a very, very significant number of people uh, underemployed, people who want to work more than they can get. I'm sure speaking to this audience, you like me would be keen followers of uh, Greg Jericho's writing uh, in The Guardian. He recently noted the shift towards part-time employment over the last decade, and I'm quoting him now, he says, we need to look at much more than the unemployment rate to gauge the health of the labour market. So one of the big recommendations that we put forward in the work that uh, you mentioned in the introduction, we did this uh, big piece of work over the last couple of years called Growing Together, Labor's Agenda for Tackling Inequality. And one of the, or well, really the central recommendation in that piece of work to deal with inequality is that our primary policy focus needs to be to deliver full employment. We thought a lot about this issue uh, and a lot of people I thought might say, oh, you know, that's such an, um, an old fashioned view. It can't be done. But actually when we put it forward, the response was fantastic. People actually wanting a Labor government to say not only uh, that this is our objective, coming back to your point about what's the purpose, what is it that you're on about, have a clear objective, full employment, and then put your mind to how you're going to deliver it. Because of course setting such a clear policy objective is one thing, very, very important in my view, uh, achieving an outcome uh, of that nature can be very, very difficult, but not impossible. So, how can policymakers create the conditions for greater employment and I think the related issues of improved security at work and better protection for workers? It's not good enough, in my view, to just have one of those things. We really need to see the three together. The impact of technological change, uh, once again, as Julia has opened the conversation, the impact of that technological change on inequality cannot be understated. Uh, technology has contributed to what's called 
the decoupling of productivity from economic growth and wages growth. This is a very, very big change that is going on in the world, not just in Australia. And I want to just uh, use some work done by a couple of professors at uh, MIT in uh, the United States. They looked at four key measures of an economy's health. Of course, per capita GDP, labor, labor productivity, the number of jobs, and median household income. And for the last, uh, for the 30 years after the Second World War, it, all four of those went up pretty steadily. Adjusted for inflation, an Am American household at the 50th percentile of income distribution earns less today than they did in 1998. Less. Adjusted for inflation. So this decoupling of productivity and growth from other key economic outcomes is likely to continue to be one of the most significant shifts in our economy over coming decades. And if, as uh, many of you would know, uh, or um, uh, I imagine you do, uh, this trend isn't just limited to the United States, although it is, it is uh, most severe in the US. Even uh, the, some of the countries where you may not expect it, S Sweden, Finland, Germany, income inequality has worsened, uh, though not as bad, as I said, as in the US. The shift in incomes from labour to capital demonstrates the changing face of business and increasing use of technology to replace human involvement in the way that uh, Julia described. The digitisation of services, combination of increasing computer power and mass data, all of this is going to change and is right now changing uh, our perceptions of employment, including those as you outlined, those that we have previously thought of as highly skilled. So for governments preparing their countries to capture the gains of economic growth like ours, the focus in my view needs to be on employment, uh, not just on growth. So for me, the issue is uh, that's where the focus needs to be. The most important response to these shifts is, uh, no surprise, but it is education, training and, of course, upskilling. We need to consider new models for growth, models that don't just focus on capital accumulation for some, but on lifting the living standards for all Australians. This really goes to the heart of your point, uh, and governments can make decisions about these issues. So we need a model that provides incentives and supports both through the tax and the transfer system to generate greater income and social mobility. Each and every one of our economic and social policy levers should be directed towards achieving broadly based job creating growth. And I really want to emphasise that you can put your levers, your economic and social levers, into job creating growth. Not, not, not <laughs> Inequality is at a 75 year high here in Australia. Two and a half million Australians are living in poverty and uh, that includes more than 600,000 children. So my fear is that without action from policymakers, inequality will continue to worsen as technology continues to reshape the labour market. In our Growing Together report that we released in March, we made a number of recommendations about uh, how governments in the future, not just the one we hoped might have been in government right now, uh, could deal with the, the uh, challenges both of uh, technological change and rising inequality. The emphasis uh, is not complete. I don't for a minute suggest that these are all the things that need to be done, but I want to go through very briefly with you the seven pillars that we emphasised are critical factors in securing inclusive growth and reducing inequality. As I've emphasised here tonight, making a policy decision to put jobs first. Full employment, 
protection of wages and conditions. Secondly, investing in the early years. All the evidence shows the benefits that come uh, by investing in maternal health, investing in very little children, support for parents. Quality education right across life, starting with early education, but going right through life. Balancing work, care and family. Thinking about uh, some of the issues, um, some of them we've uh, done a lot of work on and put some good policies in place, such as for paid parental leave, uh, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done to support uh, carers, for example. Supporting longevity. We are, as a society, living longer. We need to uh, build uh, much greater protections against discrimination of older people, uh, work harder to help and support mature age uh, employment. Building stronger communities so that we have much greater local input into decision making. Addressing what is a very serious issue in Australia and that is uh, locational disadvantage. Areas of very significant disadvantage and modernising our policy development and governance so that we have policy based on evidence and uh, decent evaluation rather than uh, uh, some of the ways it's done at the moment. I think one of the mistakes we've all made in the past is not to see the critical connections between these uh, priorities. So in our report we really uh, brought them together uh, to, um, to really see, see them as different strands of social investment under a single umbrella with a single mission and that is to tackle inequality to make sure that all Australians across their whole lives can be active contributors to our economy and to our communities. I want to uh, finish by just drawing your attention to another uh, very important piece of work that's just been published by the Chifley Research Centre uh, called Inequality, the Facts and the Future. Uh, this report advocates unambiguously for a wealth creation agenda based on a strong middle class. And I do want to especially acknowledge the work that uh, our former Labor Treasurer, Wayne Swan's done to contribute to this thinking. As Wayne made clear at the launch of the Chifley Report, he said, we've got to make sure that we continue critical investments in education that drive equality of our human capital. And I think uh, we're all aware that our education system is currently falling far short of what is needed to prepare Australians for the far-reaching changes taking place. I've already mentioned the importance of uh, uh, investing in the early years. You'd be aware of uh, Labor's commitment to a needs-based funding system for our schools, uh, so critical to reverse the decline in performance, making sure that our students actually leave school with the skills that they need for the future. And I want to emphasise the skills that often don't get mentioned. Creativity, interpersonal skills, problem solving, the sorts of things that humans can do uh, and uh, the ones that need to be nurtured and valued. Uh, we have to do a lot more to make sure uh, our universities uh, actually improve their completion rates. Uh, we uh, really aren't getting the best uh, out of our universities. Uh, of course, there's so much that needs to be done in the vocational education sector. Another, uh, the final area I just want to emphasise is, of course, the critical role of lifelong learning. When we were doing this research, uh, I must say I uh, was surprised to see, uh, pleasantly surprised to see, the very, very large number of Australians that are engaged in lifelong learning. More than 40% of adults uh, are undertaking some form of adult learning, which I don't know about you, I thought that was very high and uh, forms a great basis, I think, f uh, on which to build. But if we want more people to uh, uh, 
engage in adult learning, of course, we're going to have to make sure that the way in which we deliver that adult learning is done as flexibly as possible and that people have the financial capacity to engage in it. Uh, this is going to be important, uh, particularly for the most uh, low skilled in our community. There's a whole range of reforms which we touch on in, uh, in our report, uh, which I won't go through uh, given the time. So for us, just to summarise, uh, tackling inequality first and foremost uh, begins with jobs. We have to put jobs at the centre of our policy making. Uh, the biggest cause of poverty and disadvantage in Australia is unemployment and underemployment. We've got so many households where the main breadwinner is unemployed. 60% of those people are living below the poverty line. So there is so much more that we need to do to address uh, unemployment, underemployment, particularly in some of our regional communities where unemployment uh, is so great. Long-term unemployment, the large numbers of Australians that are in insecure work and uh, of course, probably, uh, certainly for me, most disturbing of all, the very, very high level of youth unemployment. The goal should be, and really I throw this out to you all as a challenge as you go into your groups, uh, what do you think uh, you could add to the work we've already done that would see uh, our policies make sure that everybody who can work does work to their full capacity. Thank you.